Hey guys, I just wanted to do my composite review of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Agents of Hydra arc when, da when Daisy and Simmons are forced to go into the framework to try to free their try to free the fellow agents. And it turns out that Ada has manipulated the framework to her own end to the point where it has each member experiencing their greatest regrets. Um, like, you know, Coulson regrets, you know, having a life outside of S.H.I.E.L.D. where he turned down a recruitment from Nick Fury and became a school teacher. Um, May's regret that she, is that she never had to kill that person in Baran, that kill, kill that kid in Baran. Um, Fitz's regret was not being able to interact with his father. They have, um, Max's regret is not being able to, her daughter, his daughter's death, Hope, who died of SIDS in the real world, but in this world died, is like alive and well, is probably like 10 years old, apparently. And it seems like she's all, he's also nicknamed her Spark Plug as part of his regret for his prejudice against um, Lincoln and the other Inhumans in general. And the problem is, is that some of these regrets also come at a cost. And it turns out that, you know, and apparently in this virtual reality, Simmons was killed because Hydra used, the because the kid in Baran was never killed, she ended up becoming causing far more death and destruction in, in an incident in Cambridge in which Hydra used the incident to rise up and take over and create this you know, fascist new world order. And now you have um, Coulson teaching like the history about Hydra and how like Inhumans are evil and basically helping spread all this propaganda. And May is one of the top agents at Hydra now and Fitz is now, because of his dad's abuse of influence, He's basically turned him into a monster. He's basically known as the Doctor and essentially second in command of Hydra with Ada now taking the alias of Madame Hydra or Ophelia leading the organization. And apparently, and you get to see a lot of um, characters who passed away, who've been killed off, like return. Like you get to see Bakshi, um, one of the top um, Hydra operatives from season two, return as like a newscaster spreading propaganda. Um, Senator Nadir's brother VJ is now a victim who was provided fake IDs by Grant Ward, who I here's the thing I didn't figure out is like basically how events in this alternate reality, like this little what if reality, led to him still being alive and you know you know, how is how is that extrapolated from whose regrets? Was like the Daisy subconsciously wished that she had a stable relationship with with um, Ward is a result of maybe that was something May wanted subconsciously. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure the logic behind that. But the cool thing is, is that you dig even with the character killed off, you still got to see. I get the coolest thing was that you got to see like if he if the character was still alive and trapped in the framework, you still get, like you would still get to see like what his greatest regrets were because you find out that Ward in this reality that. Instead of being recruited by um, John Garrett for Hydra, he was recruited by Victoria Han, who he murdered in I think one sixteen, back in season, you know, in season one, obviously. And after he tried to burn his parents' house down, and then he tried to reform himself, especially after instead of you know being a mole for you know working against Hydra and being a mole for Shield. And especially he turned against Hydra when he found out that, you know, she was in a relationship with Sky and that she was an inhuman, even though the problem is that her powers were still dormant for a while in the framework. And even even Mace's greatest and they even have also introduced Mace, his greatest regret was not being able being at an actual inhuman and in in this world he is, and he's actually leading the resistance against Hydra in the framework. And the thing is is that Sim um, Simmons is the one who's probably the most dismissive of it. It's like, oh, we're wasting time. None of this is real. And basically just tries to like, he doesn't try to like ease anybody into, um, this idea that there's in a virtual reality prison. And I think Daisy's the one who's probably not trying to like dump it all on them because it's a lot to take in, even if they don't have, um, 
even the, I mean, even the, even they basically just can't remember what their lives are like in the re- real world at this point. I mean, because Coulson was the only one who had his mind tampered with through the Tahiti project, he's the one that Daisy is able to get through to him, and he has like fragments of his old memories. And it basically manifested itself through having a calendar that says May on it with a picture of Lola. And he kept writing on, it's a magical place, which kind of a phrase he said at the Tahiti Project, but also reminiscent when he was, you know, scribbling Cree writing after, um, you know, beginning early in season two. And, you know, he still had the, I guess, like the hula dancing girl, like car, car thing, for lack of better terms. So that's how it was manifesting. He's the one who was the most evil, the most open to the fact that, you know, Hydra was full of shit because, and it was all propaganda because of his mind being tampered with from the, from the Tahiti project. And he's able to go along with it the easiest. Um, and of course, May, of course, like May and Ada are like manipulate Mac who, when they take him captive into tricking Daisy into exposing herself as a traitor when he, feed them information about his other life and also she ends up getting captured and tortured and the other and you know ward you know ward simmons and who was balls who was who was there like they find they and colson they actually finding um Radcliffe on an island with Agnes because they're both dead, but their minds are trapped in there. And Radcliffe explains what happens, but the problem is that Fitz and Madame Hydra show up. And Madame Hydra vents how she felt like she was just treated like an object and in the real world. And she's able to manipulate Fitz into killing Agnes to spite Radcliffe and take him captive and torture him. And the problem is that Madame Hydra has also destroyed most of the back doors out of the framework. So now they're struck. At, but from Daisy being captured and and talking to Radcliffe, she found that he left one back door that even Ada couldn't even interfere with. And it turns out that Ada's master plan was to manipulate Fitz into working on something called Project Looking Glass, which is which is which she's able to like go back and forth between. You know her robot body in the real world, and you know her bot and her transfer her mind into the framework, which is like a creating like a gateway, which allows her to manifest a real human body through, you know, through this different techno through like dark hole dark hold enhanced technology, and basic and basically she's having Fitz work on the project on his end. And Fitz re- and you know Radcliffe finds out that that's what she that's what she's up to, and that they and and basically everybody has to try to get back to the real world before that happens. But she ends up succeeding with the project thanks to um, the superior working on it on his end and wanting to be free of his programming after he's been brought back as a cyborg and can't kill Colson and May. But Radcliffe ends up leading. Um, everybody, t- everybody to this like steel mill in the virtual world, and even though there's like molted like it's like this molted pit, it's like molten metal or something that Daisy, who after she gets her powers back through Terra Genesis in the virtual world, is able to open is able to open it up because and May and May was able to turn against Hydra because. He re- she realizes that she was on orders, forced to launch an attack on a Hydra facility that had shoulder in it, and she felt. And then this patriot ended up sacrificing himself to make sure everybody got out before the building collapsed. And so she felt guilt. You know, and of course Fitz felt the most guilty of it because he also gave the orders that got basically Mace killed. And and the thing is that you know I think the I think the thing I liked the most about it is like he, they also have Trip being rescued during that mission and about pro, and be letting everybody know about Project Looking Glass and you know, you realize like how much you miss like his affability and like the levity he brought to the team even though like he didn't really have much time on the show and I like this version of Ward you know when you, you get to see like how capable he was of being good and even Sky saying like he never fully understood him. 
and didn't realize how capable of being good he was until he saw it met the framework counterpart. And even he's like apologizing to Simmons when she discloses that who he was on the other side and and saying, you know, and, and Simmons ends up feeling bad about being so dismissive of Mac being with his virtual reality daughter and he's saying that, that even if it, if it's real to him, doesn't it make it real? Is the armor piercing question she gives to Simmons. But, and, it's, and the, it's the reason why Mac is the only one, even when he realizes that it's a virtual world, because like you see like all these like ones and zeros and codes when some, every time somebody goes through the gateway to the real world, that he just doesn't want to, doesn't want to leave his daughter behind, even though Daisy's begging him to. But the thing is that now they're, the thing is that everybody's forced to leave him behind and Daisy and Simmons get out, but the problem is they've sent the Zephyr has since been shot down because they were forced to decloak and you know, they were shot out of the sky by the superior and his company and everybody else, you know, we have, um, you know, Fitz and May and Colson getting out and Fitz being horrified of, you know, everybody of course gets their memories back and Fitz being horrified at, you know, what he had to, of the things he did in the framework and um, Ada confronting him, you know, now being in a human body and feeling genu genuine emotions and seeming to caring for him in a twisted way, but it still seems like he's still, like she hasn't lost her manipulative tendencies and she's able to like teleport him and f her and Fitz away. And it basically just kind of ends, that's the kind of the cliffhanger it ends on. And it just feels like, you know, this is probably, this whole, this is the storyline, probably one of the best storylines that this show's had, and what also helped make it one of the strongest seasons, especially how it was built up to this. And you had to see different sides of characters, you know, and, you know, what their lives would have been like in this, you know, Hydra-operated world, and if they had the greatest regrets, and the, what kind of, you know, change in this, like, alternative reality and i thought it was like very creative and it's a shame that this um show is like being in danger of being canceled because i feel like this has been like i said its strongest arc and you know there's only a few more episodes left i'm just excited to see how this all wraps up now now that everybody's free of the framework so what do you guys think of the storyline so far has this been your favorite one how do you think it compares to the lmd storyline and the Ghost Rider storyline. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you like this video, like, share, and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.